you permission, Danny. And if you need, do you need, just let me know. I can always send you the raw, like we did through uh, Weed Transfer. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit record. Hi, this is Sheila with Conscious Conversations Central, and it is Saturday, February the 10th, 2018, and I'm joined by Danny Lunacy and Hello. also BZ Reader. Thank you both for, for being here. So, Danny, you and I, in other conversations, we had talked about. Um, talking about authoring one's own perceptions. And I thought that was really, and BZ just said, you know, that we really are in a, what'd you call it? Perception revolution. A perception revolution. And, and I think that's true. I, I've always had a feeling that each of us, um, each of us individual singular ones of the all, um, have perception filters that will that can never actually be the same um, because it's a compilation of everything we've ever heard, seen, experienced um, over the course of our lifetimes, and that is what shapes our perceptions, and therefore the filter that everything comes through. And so I think I might have shared that with you, Danny, or maybe you've heard me say it at, um, in another video. And I loved what you talked about. Um, I loved the idea of talking about taking charge of that because it is, it's like, it's a constant fight to shape our perceptions out there, it would seem. You know, what with all the mind programming that goes on. <laughs> Yeah, there's only there's only so far that you can get in reclaiming your power before you realize that uh wow, the root of reclaiming my power is reclaiming my perceptions. That's I keep finding out I'm wrong about everything and realizing that uh wow, well, this narrative that you've been given is intentional to get you to behave a certain way and uh, to give yourself the allowance to, to think differently, to, to use new ideas and to implement those ideas and to behave in a different way. Um, it's, uh, that's the spiritual journey, really. That's how we bring changes, positive changes to our lives. Yeah. And most people don't, well, I don't think that most people recognize that, you know, they have, they can have different, um, maybe sectors would be a way to say it, of perception, different kind of main areas, you oftentimes tied to where they actually took those perceptions on. And more importantly, that their perception colors their perspective of something. And so that really then, um, is setting up many layers that had nothing to do with anything that came directly from them, from a thinking, feeling, you know, holistic um, with them being the captain of their ship, you know, view it all. Well, like for, for me, when I think about, um, that's the whole idea for me behind my becoming a puzzle piece collector, so to speak. You have to be able to, or I had to be able to open my mind to consider something else, to take a look at my perspective and try to step out of that perspective and just 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 a little jog over to the left or a little jog over to the right to try to see it in a different manner B because if i held on to my perspective and my using that perception that i had just removing the idea of programming and conditioning out of it 
for those who say, well, I've not been programmed and conditioned. <laughs> I used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and there are the loads of folks who still feel that way. But so removing all of that to say, well, to, to, to try to consider something from another's point of view requires a step to the left or the right. And I don't, I don't mean that, or up or back, it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to say, you know, that whole left-right paradigm bull crap, or just a little over to the side, or, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, I don't care, whatever it is. In order to do that, I mean, there, it's not, for me, it's, it's like, you know, I've said this before too, it's like having a cup of coffee with someone, you're not being asked to get engaged considering an idea or or looking at something from a different perspective doesn't mean that you are committing to that perspective or that perception of that perspective you are considering it you're having a cup of coffee with it you're having a soda pop if you so desire whatever it doesn't matter you're not giving it a ring and asking it to get married and, and I don't know, that's, that's one, one of the things that I like about, because at first, in order to hmm, author your own perceptions, you have to see, see that you need to take a look at some of them, right? Yeah. Well, one of the ways that I find is just to play with it is someone will ask me a question. And usually, you know, it's, not a simple question, but they'll ask me a question. And unless I've spent a lot of time having conversations and playing with this particular person, I'll say, okay, well, what's your perception of that? And they kind of look at me like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, you, you hold the whole perception of that and, and then you have perspective from that. Um, and so if you can, you know, I, I generally, genuinely want to have a conversation and, and see if I can, you know, answer that question for you. Um, but knowing what your perception of it is will help me because otherwise, if I, if I just give you what, what my perspective on it is and my answer, which can be, you know, very expansive, um, depending on your perception, which is your base point, you may look at me and go, what are you talking about? <laughs> but if I know your perception, then I can actually meet you. I can walk across the bridge in the conversation to where you are mm -hmm. from your understanding of something. And I can tailor the answer. The answer and the truth from my perspective that I'm giving won't change, but I can tailor how the communication occurs so that I can then give metaphors or, or hooks that you can, you know, points of reference hooks that you can understand from that perception that will help you if you want to actually be in a conversation and, you know, walk across this bridge of, of more expansion. It's an expansion bridge. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That. That's I like that, BZ. Helpful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, that's uh, that's those are different words to to describe uh, the the same dynamic that that I have uh, used when when I'm speaking with people. But I usually uh, describe it as I listen and allow and ask a lot of questions and ask people how they feel about things. And once I get a sense for the window dressings that they're using to describe these blatant patterns that show up in all of their lives, then I can just describe this pattern using the window dressings that they've given me as a language to communicate that back. And that's pretty much what you said. And this, this reminds me of a vision that I had uh, where Grace was helping all of us by sending us the ideas that, not so much the ideas of where we're at, but that are just contiguous, just adjacent to where we're at. And in this vision, she was uh, 
just like she was sprinkling flower petals at a wedding, but she was sprinkling little idea nuggets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one idea nugget, it, it might repulse somebody, but it might just be contiguous enough, you know, in the positive direction from where somebody's at. And in all of this, you start to realize that there are multiple perspectives, depending upon if you're going to turn around and look back or uh, if you're looking forwards. And the only time when there's only one perspective is really when you're in the darkness trying to find your way out. And, and the only thing that you can see is your own journey. And the only thing that helps you then is a new idea, some new light right. coming across. And, and that's why I like to phrase it the way I do, because even if they don't want to play much beyond that, there's a, a thought form seed that has been laid down. Should they want to pick it up just in the idea of what's their perception of that? You know, what do you think about, um, uh, I don't know, pick anything so um you know and i'll and i'll say again what's your perception of that and just the act of asking that lets them as you said she now they they usually will energetically take a step back they may physically take step sideways they must may do something they shift their weight or something and if you've ever worked you know with horses or animals or anything if you can you can't drag somebody someplace, but if you can get them to shift their point of weight and how they're positioning themselves, they'll come forward with you. Well, I, I have to say thank you to both of you at this point because I had, <laughs> as one might guess, I have never done that. If someone asks me a question, I just launch into whatever I think instead of, and I think that's a, that's, Absolutely brilliant, I, and I want to thank you both for that because what you were saying there, BZ, made me see that just the act of asking them to let you know what their perception is gets them questioning, what is my perception? Mm -hmm. And that in alone may open um, you know, part of, well, the little logo, for lack of a better thing, that I created was a, a head with no top on it, and, and it says expand your mind. So just that alone would expand their mind to ask, have them ask themselves that question. Yeah, so pretty soon they won't need to act it out with someone. Right. right. It's, it's kind of a complete thought moment. So if they don't want to play beyond that, if they think, Hmm. and withdraw the question in that moment something exchanged there that was very hard opening and there was expansion and and no no need no risk no anything of of making anybody wrong of any kind of challenging it's all play right and and, and they choose and they're at choice point completely of how they want to move forward and i find most times even if someone is has a more resistant you know a combative stance that if it's that way they'll you know even if it's subtle they'll kind of cock their head and go huh you know so again that's the change and you said left or right well that's the same thing it's it's just shifting enough that they look at it and if you stopped right there they've they've jumped miles down the road they've done it nobody's done anything to them mm -hmm. they've done it right in and of itself right there yeah wow thank you for that <laughs> yeah there's only so long that what well, you people people are conditioned to stay in the kind of states of feeling that they're in but once you start to verbalize and hear yourself describe what your own viewpoints perceptions on just any facet of life is if, if it's a low vibrational uh perception there's only so long that you can continue to to vocalize that yeah and you you gave a beautiful illustration Annie, because when you said when they verbalize it right well they're actually giving voice to it and the resonance of the voice and the energy generated by them of speaking it of actually giving voice to it turns it into matter so they can now it's it's beyond a thought form it's beyond just an, kind of an unconscious 
I just kind of moved through the thing and this is annoying me. So I asked a question kind of a thing, right? Um, now it's there present in front of them. So I can step away because now they've got someone there who's always with them to have a conversation with that they may not have recognized before. Yeah, it connects everyone with their power. Yeah. Well, and, and quite frankly, for me personally, as I have made the rather painful error of just launching into whatever I think when I'm asked a question like that. And I mean, that's, that's actually an experience that I had that you and I spoke of, of, of before, I think in another video busy where I, in, in a seemingly innocent question by a person who held a lower vibrational frequency in, re, in many regards, I experienced that shearing that you talk about as I engaged in what I felt, you know, was in my mind, well, you asked me a question, I'm going to tell you what I think, <laughs> or what my feelings and thoughts and are on this situation. And then it became, uh, well, no, this is what I think, you know, that sort of thing. And it was, uh, it became a painful inter in interchange for me. And, and, and experience where in this manner by asking, well, what's your perception of, 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 of this question? For me, I'm seeing this as being able to gauge, first of all, where they are in, in that, on that particular subject and whether or not I wish to engage quite frankly, because that, that could be, at issue for me, I'm not, mm, I'm, I'm just beginning to get a handle on authoring my own perceptions. I don't really know that I'm ready or capable of trying to assist someone in, in anything or so that, that feels like it could serve me in, in many ways. I, I don't know. That's just the way I'm feeling at the moment about it. Well, from a linear perspective, oftentimes when someone asks a question, they're not asking you the question because they have the answer that they want you to give them. And then that plays into the whole judgment thing. So it's not truly a question, right? Uh -huh. it, it's a statement with a, you know, you know, kind of a, a sound at the end that, you know, want to go here, <laughs> you know, so that they can make that apostrophe question mark thing there. The um, same words that are used in these questions, uh, it, underneath of everything, here's a request for your energy that's wrapped up into this question, and until you get a little bit more information from them, you don't know what kind of energy they're asking of you, and you, you don't have a sense of whether or not this is healthy for you. Right. But also for them, it's... You know, when someone asks me a question, I hold it that that I genuinely, genuinely want to be of service and answer the question. I know who I am. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about that, but I'm not putting anything that I have on them. So I can play and have a genuine answering of the question by saying, great, tell me what your perception of that is. So... I gave them lots of information, whether they choose to do anything or not with it. And, and I have been genuine that, in that connection. But I've also, from an energetic standpoint, um, short circuit's not quite the right phrasing, but I, I've, I've done, it's almost like a um, uh, frequency interrupt for a moment by asking that because it lets more of who they really are come into the space for even if it's just a nanosecond to look at. While they're considering what their perception is, mm -hmm. that's the frequency interrupt. Okay, interesting. Wow. Because in that way, you know, the, the blah, blah, blah on either side really isn't of that, in that moment, of that much significance. It's, 
Well, uh, maybe a simple way to say it is it gives them an opportunity right that moment to hold the space for them to meet them, even if for just a tiny nanosecond. Well, uh, another, another way to, I think, to describe the dynamics, see if this resonates with you, is that uh, people have expectations of the conditioned ways in which people are going to respond and they seek energy. And, and what you've done is, and, and, and I might add that in this, what the, whatever the menu has to offer for the different ways in which we interact this way unconsciously in society, we don't have to know ourselves in order to interact this way. These are just all little snippets of behavior patterns and interactions and sound bites to, uh, to what transact energy between beings. And as soon as you counter that invitation, but with, you're basically saying, okay, I'll give you some energy, but it's going to be of this other flavor that you, you're not <laughs> familiar with. Then all of a sudden they have to, this is different. I, I don't I don't know what label to put on this. How, I, how do I know what label to put on this? Right. Oh, right there. If if that could be their first observation for them knowing that wow, there's a different way to live life. Apparently, this 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 woman's got some some different ideas. Yeah, it's Makes not me, your average bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so so how does one then, is that just the beginning of authoring, authoring my own perception? Is to just question what my perception is. Would that be the beginning, do you think? Is that the... I, I mean, think the first is to realize that you'd have a perception. Ah. Uh, because you think mo maybe folks don't realize they have perceptions or perception filters? Is that? There, that was, there was a good time in my life uh, growing up where I thought that everything that I was experiencing in general was what everyone else was experiencing. Uh, when I was going to kindergarten, I remember the, the teacher had this cutaway view on this big, easel board of you know the human head and you could see like the the tongue going down and you know that had the tonsils and the the teacher pointed to the long tube that went all the way down and what's this and you know all the all little kindergartner kids in my class were like oh that's the throat and the roof of your mouth and you know all these just all these normal words and me from just the particular cocktail of experiences I grew up in, I just raised my hand. I said, that's the esophagus. And I was in kindergarten. And right then I just, I got this experience because every kid looked at me. They're like, what just came out of your mouth? The teacher was like, <laughs> uh, and, and, and so I thought, Wow, everybody knows what esophagus is. Like I was like just bursting at the seams, like, doesn't everybody know this? And you know, when I I think it was when I first went off to college that and and just seeing just the wide range of experiences and families and cultures and just socioeconomic conditions that that people uh you know, come from when they arrive at college. And, and that just really, it, it showed me that people thought of the world a lot differently than I had been really given no other opportunity to think about the world in a particular way. And a lot of my biggest triggers were watching other people behave in a way that worked for them, but didn't fit with the reality that I had been programmed with and oftentimes you know in that illustration a memory came back to me which i thought was very interesting i haven't thought about it since it happened but um it, it, when things like that happen um and there may may not with the esophagus but the, oftentimes there's 
lots of pack that that particular the way you call they called us the throat you said it's esophagus so for you and for those listening there's lots of different things packed into that particular thing that you can see all sorts of social and so the example i'll give that popped into my head my daughter was little maybe I don't know, four, and she was sitting down on a log next to a, a friend that she um, met at the uh, nature camp. And the friend asked if, you know, she wanted a sandwich, and he handed her a sandwich that was on white bread. And she looked and she said, well, what's that? And he said, it's a sandwich. She said, I know, but what's that? What's it in? And he said, white bread. And she said, oh, I've never seen that, you know? And, and she said, no, I, I am good. I've got whatever she's got. And, you know, so it, it wasn't, there was no big thing for the, the bigness of it was for me sitting, you know, in right in that area watching this. And I thought, look at that, just in, in a very, you know, sharing and all that was nice. But I'm saying in the, the, the white bread um, offering and Charlotte going, well, what is that right there's all these social kind of things that are packed into it that if you think about now why we have those things and and you know wonder bread comes to mind and it's wonderful and you know when if we look behind the scenes we really see that no it's it's a great tool but it's not wonderful you know at itself so oftentimes when when people have those disconnects that you're talking about danny they're if we notice and look around, there's all sorts of stuff that's packed in, like just like data and uh, data sets and perceptions and all sorts of um, scripts that are packed into those things as well. In, in, and you can just say it in, in the white bread kind of a thing. Right. Well, it, because when you, when you were talking about the, the esophagus and now the white bread as well, I recall pretty early on in my childhood, about 13, I guess, my mother saying multiple times, uh, Sheila, not everyone thinks like you do. Um, which, you know, so, so your, your thoughts there about how, oh, really? I thought everybody knew this or... Mm -hmm. So that is something that we all kind of go through. I remember as a kid too, wondering as I was passing houses and seeing in, in the front living room window, you know, families like, well, what do they do at, at nighttime? Do, are they all sitting around a dinner table, you know, thinking they would be doing the exact same things that we're doing and not, not really comprehending at that at that moment as a little kid thinking, Oh, they're, they're all, you know, having dinner and, you know, that sort of thing at, you know, at this, about the same time we do, you know, all that kind of thing and wondering if indeed that is the same. And it wasn't until I was a little bit older than two that I was like, do they really exist? Do are they really in there? you know, because when you're a kid, I guess, you know, then there's that too, but it's all a perception game then, isn't it? Well, that's yeah. what, that's what the spiritual journey is all about. Figuring out perception. Right. Wow. And one of the things that made you made me think of Sheila, when you're talking about it, is that, um, Danny, you said, well, wait a minute, doesn't, doesn't everybody hold it that way or think about it that way or describe it that way, right? So here's a really good point. I know this is maybe not quite what we're talking about, but it's a side of it that, that comes to mind for me. So when we, in, in that, that beautiful example that you just gave, well, wait a minute, doesn't everybody, you know, right? So we can look at different we's, can look at something and go, well, how could they do that, right? Or why would they do that? But you're trying to um, project on them something that they're just not capable of because that has not been their worldview. So for an example of something that's a, um, you know, an act and the way they were trained and brought up that has to do with a, a, a lot of 
it's not just the very elites, but it's, you know, a whole segment that that's how they operate, where vis-a-vis satanic rituals and all that kind of stuff. Okay, they were in that. That's how their, there was their perceptions and their programming and all of that. And so either they might language it some that they're trapped in it or that they just don't know any different because that's a perception, right? Mm-hmm. So, and until they can take a step back, and this is for same for anybody, and take a step back sideways, whatever it is, and it's more of letting the way I hold it, it's more of letting them into themselves rather than, again, looking outside of themselves, which is why they, you know, had this constraining perspective in the first place. Um, well, I think we, I, I don't know if that you were involved in the conversation, but I, I did have a conversation, who are the elite? And, you know, so, so it was the same kind of thing and I, and it, it does all boil down to per, to that perception because I and I guess that all kind of comes into play with cognitive dissonance too because the whole issue is isn't it that that's the way you you know you can take anyone not even just the elite but any kind of a situation and see that if all that person from the time they were born which actually applies to us all uh, receive a conditioning of X, Y, or Z, and it doesn't even really matter. Let's say, you know, this person over here had all Christian upbringing and that's it. And it was all like this and that's all they knew. Or this one over here had the all satanic upbringing and that's it. And that's all they knew. And this one over here had none of the above and that's it. And that's all they knew. And it's really easy to see in my mind, at least, where those are perceptions that without that stepping back and looking at or questioning or considering anything outside of that um, conditioning or programming or whatever you want to call it, upbringing, um, it, it's, it's kind of easy to see that that's where that person is in that moment. So how, how, so it, it sounds to me like what we're saying here is in the idea of authoring our own perceptions, the very act of questioning, what is my perception is, is a good place to start, right? What is my perception? What, what do I think of the perception I hold? In order to answer that question, you have to acknowledge that you have a perception. Yeah. Yeah. So you can feel into it too. I mean, feeling into it, getting out of the head for a moment, because whether, and it doesn't, you know, wherever you are in, in kind of the size of those conversations that we talked about, not, not our conversation per se, but the people with perceptions or that or frame of mind or reference or something Um, because nobody's missing anything we're all source and source isn't missing anything and we're not missing anything we may be completely out of touch with what's within us but we can have the ability to to feel back into that can it be excruciating difficult? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> In a simple word, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you but know, oftentimes it had to be. Yeah, but nonetheless, that is that is so. Um, and, and you know, a lot of times if someone says, well, I know that my, um, my perspective is colored by my perception. If they can even get there, even if they don't have it all figured out, then they can see that there's a couple moving parts here that really are external, have external forces, and I'm the one who can choose that. But again, that goes back to the, the whole perception because how much from the very beginning are is intentionally, by design, overtly and demonstrably, <laughs> 
that we give our power away, that we're taught to. That's a good thing. You know, and then the judgment is the other one that keeps coming up for me when I'm listening in this conversation, you know, well, Danny said, well, doesn't everybody, I, I think about it, I don't think, you know, mm -hmm. right? So, well, that was a very open kind of a thing, but someone could say, well, so they're wrong or bad or X or Y or Z, right? Which is the judgment card um, because of that. Well, again, that's, that's beautiful because that's intentionally by design and now you got all sorts of friction going and you've got a lot of more polarities that are highlighted and all that kind of thing and so you can divide and conquer and you know i mean if you're if you're running um a gig running a long con however you want to hold it right and and there's only you know a handful of you so to say as opposed to everybody else then you better have some mechanisms in place that will really help you out when you can't be standing right there. So, you know, we kind of talked about a bunch of those things, and and if the and and if the perception, it's the jail. You know, it's part of your air, fresh air, uh, jail that we're all in. And you know, some wake up and notice it, and. Some go, I'm not in a jail. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the land of the free. <laughs> yeah. The sticker on my truck says so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I That's okay. But no judgment. No, no judgment. I used to be like that. <laughs> Yeah, hell, I'm a former New Yorker, so. <laughs> yeah. So. I guess I, I guess for for me, I'm still in the process of authoring my own perceptions. Yeah, and that's exactly where we should always be in the process of authoring. That's pending. And, and just like in that vision where grace is sprinkling the different bread comes around to lead us from one perception to the next, the particular perceptions that we hold right now are just a temporary lily pad. The, the new truths that we're waking up to, they're just going to be the old perceptions that, that we're finding aren't quite serving for us anymore. It just depends on where we're at along the journey and which direction we're heading. And uh, yeah. You're just, always in a state of expansion. Yeah, just stay pending. So, so if you got a stake in the ground, okay, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then you probably aren't on the planet anymore. <laughs> embodiment because... You know, that, that's, uh, you let that one go. <laughs> wow. Mind expanding things. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I love this. So, so, so does anyone, is there anything else that either one of you would like to add to, to what we've discussed here? Keep playing. That's what it's all, from my perspective, that's what it's all about, playing. You know, you have so much within you and you have such amazing stuff. And if you just play with it a little, you can, you can get, even if it's just a tiny, you know, glimpse out of the corner of your eye, that's there. And then, and then turn and notice it. And I like the word play that she uses because play embodies uh, self-allowance. We're just, we're just playing. You know, we're not holding ourselves to any particular outcome. We're just making observations. We're seeing what happens. We're lifting the hood up on our consciousness and we're taking a look. We're, we're, we might do a little tinker and see what happens, but uh, we got to allow ourselves, you know, there's no judgment. There's no right or wrong. Well, I love that too. And I, I, I want to thank you both so much because just that one little portion of 
asking what's your perception if because I do get asked questions um, a lot and I have always just charged ahead with whatever I thought at the moment but and that has gotten me into a lot of trouble <laughs> A lot of that shearing has gone on. And, uh, I got to the point where I was feeling like I'd much rather just stay home. <laughs> and so thank you for that. That's, 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 that's a gold nugget that I will uh, carry in my pocket every time I leave the house from now on. So thank you both for that. That was awesome. And... Um, so if that's it, I guess we'll close the energetic envelope on this one. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a good place to close that. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so I'll be putting a link to your channel, Lunacy, and also a link to the IUV to BZ's blog in the show more section of this video. And along with the Conscious Conversation Central Facebook page, and my email address. And if you'd like to be a part of the PPC squad, which is just an email address, but it's a really cool name that I made up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just send me an email and put add me in the subject line. And so thank you guys. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.